air conditioning on a Ford Focus using a single hose method. Uh, look back in my videos, I have shown this a few times. I usually don't, but um, I guess it's been long enough for any of the new subscribers or viewers who haven't seen this to see a single hose method. So in this uh, situation, one single hose, silicone hose, three quarter inches, going to a large diameter, uh, three eighths inch opening instead of the little tiny quarter inch opening that you're normally used to with your gauges. Only one hose. On the other side I have the Blue Vac Plus Pro Micron gauge. It's open to the system. It's down. This is not open to the system. I actually have it. You see it's, it has a gap there. It's screwed up so it's not pulling down a uh, vacuum right now. And this is the only true way for you to read what the actual micron readings are. I did not set up a second micron gauge right at the pump to show you there, but it would be a drastic difference because I do have to get on to some other jobs, but I decided to do this one like this this morning. It's roughly uh, 45 degrees out right now, so it's pretty cold, cold car. In this situation to help with the vacuum on cold mornings when you do cars outside or in a cold garage start up the engine close the hood and pull your vacuum with the engine compartment warming up because you want to warm up all the lines you want to warm up the condenser will get heat from the radiator and all the hoses and everything like that have oil that is just completely saturated with moisture and the only way on a cold morning in a deep vacuum to help remove that faster is by having all the lines heated up put your AC system in defrost mode put it in defrost mode if you can do recycle do recycle because it's so cold outside turn the temperature all the way up because what you want to do is you want to heat up the cabin. So you want 80, 90 degree air in here. You want it on defrost because in defrost it turns on the air conditioning mode. In the air conditioning mode, it will take the hot air, 80, 90 degrees, and recycle it through the indoor um, recycle and put it past the evaporator and heat up the evaporator. Your evaporator will have an ounce, maybe more, of oil stored inside the evaporator. If you had a system where it was very low on refrigerant before you did a repair and it slowly ran out of refrigerant, you might have the majority of all your oil stored in the evaporator because of the low mass of refrigerant. It doesn't return the oil to the compressor. So you end up, if, if you actually took off the compressor on a slowly discharging or leaking out system that lost its charge and you opened up the compressor and went to pour out the oil, if the factory said it was supposed to have two or three ounces of oil, you may find no oil pouring out at all. If you took out the evaporator and poured and tipped the evaporator over in its openings, you might find a lot of oil coming out of the evaporator because all the oil migrated out, built up inside the evaporator, there wasn't enough mass, volume, velocity of refrigerant flow to carry that oil out there, so that's where it's at. So in this case, what you're doing is you're heating that oil up while evacuating when you're in a climate that might be 40 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees. It'll take a really long time, if maybe even not at all, with your regular pumps, you won't be able to get that oil out of the, or you won't be able to get the moisture out of the oil make sure all your vents are open well you're going to have it on defrost anyway so it's all going to come out there and so let's start this up okay so the vacuum pump is on i will reach over here and i'll start turning the valve in let's watch this we'll hear the difference on the pump i don't know if you can hear it do let when it opens there it goes Okay, so we're now evacuating through one single hose on the low side and it's bringing down the vacuum entire system. The only way to get your true micron reading is being located somewhere the furthest point away from where you're evacuating. 
this was very easy to do on old R12 systems, especially if they had accumulators or switches that had depressure switches, uh, depressing ports on them that had a valve core in them because you could remove them. You would hook on your micron gauge there or at the accumulator and you can actually take, take a true micron reading in the system to know you went way below 500 microns if you could. The lower the better. On automotive it's very difficult sometimes to get below 500 microns especially with normal systems. So as you can see this is taking quite a while. There we go. So now we're getting down there and we're getting down there pretty damn rapidly. Too bad I didn't do video editing and I had a normal, if I could get an AC machine from another shop here and hook it up and try to do the same thing, you'll probably see that it'll take several minutes longer before it even starts to register with a normal, uh, say, Robin Air, Whale, uh, Bosch or anything like that. And so now we're reading the vacuum here, not at the pump or the gauges or anything like that. Uh, if we were reading at the gauge, it would have started reading probably within the first 30 seconds. And it would already have went down well over here. It didn't even start to read yet. So just to show you, we're in the 2000 mark area. Let me uh, turn off the vacuum. So now I'm going to unwind, back this out. And you'll see it start to rise. I should rise. Come on. Or it's, first it's leveling out. So what's happening is this is a lag time. The vacuum over in this large line is much lower than the vacuum in this high side line over by the compressor and through the condenser. So because the vacuum is much lower over there, it's actually pulling this side to fill the lower void. It's a, high, a lower pressure. So just like higher water and two buckets connected with a little hose, if you raise the water over here through the little tiny hose, the water level will go down in a bucket as the other bucket raises to level out. So this is what's happening right now. If you took two balloons and you blew up one balloon and you could put a straw from one balloon to the empty balloon and then open it up, the balloon that is blowing up will go down halfway while the balloon that is empty will fill up halfway. So that's what's going on right here. Even though I have the vacuum off, I have it turned out. It's not going down. And you see it's still, it's still going down. So let's do this once again. What I'm doing is I'm depressing the valve so it'll open the vacuum up to the system. And now you'll see it clip. It's actually bouncing back up. This is... Uh, a phenomenon that happens it's actually going down in, in the overall schema thing it's actually going down but this is a phenomenon that happens that'll confuse a lot of guys because something's broken there's a leak I know there's not a leak I know that's drawing a good vacuum guys will go there's a leak and because uh, my vacuum is going up and so it's, now you can see it's going back down again but at first and it's bouncing around so that's moisture bubbling off and boiling out of the refrigerant oil that is trapped in the system, you'll actually see vacuum spiking up and spiking down, spiking up and spiking down. If you graph this out, if you've seen some of my other videos, if you graph this out, you'll see it spiking up and down, up and down. And if you graph it out over a long period of time, you'll see a pattern that it's slightly going down, but it's popping back up. And this is actually a water that is actually bursting out of the oil like steam. And we all know steam expands like 1600 times more than its liquid form. And those little micro bursts of steam that's happening throughout the whole entire system are rising the pressure up. 
but at the same time the vacuum is trying to bring it back down if you had a completely dry system and you were drawing a vacuum on it and you were grafting it out like you've seen in some of my other videos you would see the micron stop say start way up here say at 2000 microns and you'd see a nice steady slow line and as it got down towards lower and lower microns you would see it start leveling out and it's not falling as fast because it's harder it takes more power to do that but you'd be a steady line compared to a system that had moisture trapped in it and you graft it out and you say we started at 2000 microns again and you graft it down you'd see it popping up and it'd go down and it'd pop up and it'd go down and it'd be constantly doing this and it might do it for minutes or even hours depending on how wet the system is before you started seeing it taper off it reaches the equilibrium and there's no more moisture or next to nothing to remove and you'd see it start to drop again and it would stop doing the little peaks and it'd start leveling out and I know this is a really really wet system by how long this is taking if this was a completely dry system I would probably be down to around 400 microns right now and I would turn that off and it would basically stay steady with just a slight creep up but because the system is so wet it will stay here for a long time so I would be here for an hour watching this because the system is completely saturated it's PAG oil, K oil and uh, this would be watching like watching paint dry trying to evacuate this out and get it completely dry they did not change the um, receiver dryer the desiccant material inside the on the system so it's completely saturated with moisture there's nothing I can do about that this vehicle the hose was like I said the beginning of the vehicle the hose was snapped off two years ago and it was left exposed to the atmosphere for two years uh, family life happened money was problems for this customer I was told and so it didn't get repaired until now and so now I'm out here doing this I just wanted to show you this the single hose system and I'll do the second video with uh, putting the charge directly into the high side and this is only if you didn't have gauges and you only had a vacuum pump and you only had say two hoses or if you wanted to you could switch the hose from here to here if you only owned one hose it all depends on your budget uh, but one thing I gotta say for guys who really want to learn and do a good job a micron gauge is just a must it's not even an option it never has been and uh, it was something I was brought up since I was 12 years old I've been using a micron gauge but back in those days it ran off D batteries in a big leather case with an analog needle it took 10 minutes to set up and uh, I was trained like that I was trained no other way when I was young there was no shortcut methods I was not allowed to know butcher or hack jobs or or taking shortcuts when I was a kid. My dad only taught me the proper way, so I didn't know no better until I got into the real world, in the shops, to find out what was actually going on in the real world, how nobody knew anything. And they just hacked everything together and took it down to 27, 29 inches of mercury and then filled it up right away and let the car go out the window. And no wonder there were so many failures. But that was a surprise when I finally started working in the real world compared found out there was no education in this in the in the automotive industry there is basically no education when it came to everything it's mostly word of thought uh, word of mouth and reading little articles in magazines and at best somebody attained uh went to like a five hour or six hour seminar sat down in a chair watched some slides and listened to a guy speak and that was it that was the total of their education and uh this was left out so that's it guys, I'll show the fill up later.